I asked you all to give me players to play narrative ball with, and if you don't know what that means, you're about to find out. Davis Schneider, through his first 14 career games, has an OPS of 1420. That is the highest in Major League history. That sounds really good when you realize Lou Gehrig is fifth on this list. Let's just try to forget about Taylor Teagarden in second. Some of you might see a 24-year-old rookie who was a 28th round draft pick, but you know who I see? The GOAT through 14 career games. Now let's talk about Kebrian Hayes, who was able to just rack up the reference war thanks to his career 63 defensive runs saved. Here is the war leaderboard for third baseman since his debut season in 2020. It's the usual suspects, J. Ram, Machado, Riley, Arenado, Chapman, Bregman, and then Hayes before Devers. There you have it, folks. They're the same age and they play the same position. And since Key Brian Hayes' rookie season, he has been more valuable than Rafael Devers. Lars Newtbar. Okay, let's think. What's Lars Newtbar good at? Let's look for outfielders age 25 or younger with a career walk rate over 13% and over 10 fielding runs. Basically, these are young outfielders who walk and play good defense. This is a great crew to get Newtbar with, but I think John Nunnally kind of sticks out here, so let's see if we can refine our search. I'll just require that these players played at least 25% of their games in center field, and bam, it's just Mickey Mantle and Lars Newtbar. So there you have it, only two players have maintained a 13% walk rate and 10 fielding runs while playing center field 25% of the time through their age 25 seasons, Lars Newtbar and Mickey Mantle. Kerry Carpenter, a.k.a. Kerry Bonds, he loves to go yard. And, thanks to the powerful tool known as Stathead, Code Rule is 20% off. Uh, sorry, had a little coughing fit there. We know that he ranks second among all Detroit Tigers in home runs through their first 118 career games. Only Rudy York has not beat, and if we want to make Kerry Carpenter first, we just say, hey, since integration, you racist. And what about Phillies rookie Christopher Sanchez? You probably just thought I was a stat head merchant, but nope, I'll hop onto the stat cast as well. Christopher Sanchez's changeup has the third lowest average exit velocity against in the league this year, just behind Blake Snell and Corbin Burns. Why? Because his changeup is top 10 in both vertical drop and horizontal movement against expectation. Which is really just a nerdy way of saying that thing is moving. Isaiah Kiner Falefa, Yankees fans hated him as their shortstop, but now they kind of like him as their super utility despite the fact he's hitting the exact same. But speaking of that hitting, Kiner Falefa hit 278 with a 350 on base percentage in last year's postseason, the only postseason of his career, and thus, I'm happy to say that Isaiah Kiner Falefa has both a higher postseason batting average and on base percentage than Joe DiMaggio. And of course, as we know, those are the games that really matter. Jurickson Profar, who's possibly been the least valuable player in the entire league this year. We're going to hop on fan graphs just so you know I'm not a stat head merchant. I mean, I am in the sense that I'm trying to sell it to you, I guess. But fan graphs has their own splits tool. And hey, you've heard of low leverage situations. You've heard of high leverage situations. But what about medium leverage? Well, in medium leverage situations this year, Jurickson Profar has a 102 WRC+. Plus. That's above average. And he's done better in those types of situations than Bobby Witt Jr., Matt Chapman, Brian Reynolds, and Trey Turner this year. Another challenge, Jared Kelnick, but only 2021 or 2022 when he was downright terrible. But Kelnick was known to heat up in September during that time frame. In his first September, September 2021, he hit seven home runs and stole three bases. So once again, thanks to Stathead, Code Foolish 20, we can say Jared Kelnick became the first player in an age 21 season or younger to hit seven home runs and steal three bases in September since Bryce Harper in 2012. I apologize for dead naming in advance, but back when Michael simply went as Mike, he had an insanely good 2019 rookie season during one of the highest offensive periods we've seen in Major League Baseball. As such, a normalized stat like ERA Plus is going to be the go-to for now. So, since integration, Michael Soroka's 2019 season represents the highest single-season ERA Plus by a pitcher in their age 21 season in the National League. Vita Blue has him beat for the American League, so we'll just say National League. Patrick Bailey. Look, from one great Bailey to another, I'll make this simple. 
Patrick Bailey has become a sabermetric superstar because he plays insane catcher defense both in terms of his framing and his ability to throw out base runners. Fangraphs has him as the most valuable defender in 2023 despite the fact he didn't make his debut until May 19th. And because Giants fans don't like Yadier Molina because they're a little protective of Buster Posey, we'll just point out that Patrick Bailey is accruing F4 at a pace far higher than Yadier Molina's career. Need a narrative on Jeremy Pena? Well, considering this year's been a little bit disappointing for him, let's combine his 2022 and 2023 and try to build something special. Let's look at a combination of home runs and stolen bases because, historically speaking, guys didn't really do both until recently. And let's look across a player's first two seasons because that's going to eliminate some cup of coffee, I only play 10 games my first season type guys. So with that, I can confidently say Jeremy Pena is the only shortstop in MLB history with 30 home runs, plus 15 fielding runs, and 20 stolen bases in their first two career seasons. Alternatively, we can drop all those requirements by five and just say since integration, and he's in the same company as Francisco Lindor, Trevor Story, and the man he ultimately replaced, Carlos Correa. Rob Ref Snyder, the ref dog, one of the great platoon hitters of the last couple seasons for the Red Sox. We're just going to hop on fan graphs here and say, hey, Rob Ref Snyder's on base percentage versus left handed pitching is 40 points higher than Aaron Judge's over the last two seasons. Yeah, that's right, Aaron Judge. You, my friend, have been narrative bald. K Bear Ruiz, you know what I'm going to do for K Bear Ruiz? I'm going to make a spreadsheet. K. Bear Ruiz does not like to strike out, and you know what? He'll barrel up the ball more often than the guys like Luis Arias or Stephen Kwan. So we're just going to look at the relationship between barrel percentage and K percentage. And in that particular metric, K. Bear Ruiz has the 15th best ratio in the league, and the next four hitters after him are Pete Alonso, Rafael Devers, Juan Soto, and Bryce Harper. Yasmani Grandal, another challenge. He's been really bad these last couple of years. But thanks to StatHead, I can tell you, among catchers with at least 700 plate appearances over the last two years, Yasmani Grandal is one of just five with a walk rate over 10%. The others are Alejandro Kirk, Adley Rutschman, William Contreras, and Will Smith. That's what Narrative Ball is all about. Just try to get your player in good company. And finally, it's Tony Gonsolin, and what I'm going to do here is just eliminate his 2023 season from the equation and say, hey, Tony Gonsolin has the lowest ERA for a starter in their first four seasons since 1990. So that's it for this round of Narrative Ball. If you want to learn more about StatHead, I have a link in my description, and again, Foolish20 for 20% off.